Cool. So again, welcome to the uh, Dynamic Data Capabilities Working Group uh, meeting. Uh, so I started recording. Uh, please put your name on your, your attendee list if you haven't already. Um, is there anyone volunteering to take notes today? Please, please. I, I can oh. take notes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jim. Awesome. So, someone was a relatively good state in their browser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky. Um, all right. Um, all right. Let's do some some intros and, and updates. By the order of, uh, can be the attendee uh, list. I can go first. So um, last two weeks, I released a peer star app or peer base uh, version zero ten six, which uh, uh, includes a, a bunch of uh, fixes and, and improvements. You can. Um, um, it's it's uh, it's uh, um, something that that mainly fixes some some things on the pinner. Um, in progress is a migration for of PeerStar app into a new um, GitHub uh, organization, which is PeerBase. So right now we just only have PeerBase slash PeerBase, uh, which is a migration of PeerStar app uh, to there. But the plan is to um, migrate well extract some components and be able to um, to speed up tests for uh, peer base uh, itself uh, so that we don't we're not overloaded with all the extra components around around it and there's a um, there's a proposal for for exactly what we should extract first and here is the the, the issue um, also there is some work on js delta cdts to make it more performance, so progressively compute the, the view uh, value. And so far we've done the RGA. Um, and so this is something that will, every time you do, for instance, in peer star app collaboration.share.value, uh, instead of computing the value every time, uh, even uh, right now it's memoized, this state hasn't changed, but uh, with this change, uh, the, 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 the value changes, is mutable. The value itself, the view value, gets to be changed every time there is a new change event without having to recompute the, the whole state. So this is uh, something that, that's been long coming. Uh, also been helping Dirk in simplifying the, the, the process of discovery. M mainly Dirk has been doing uh, all the work. Uh, there's just some tweaks uh, around something that is not Dirk's fault, which is the connection management uh, part, so severing, uh, uh, terminating connections when the collaboration uh, is is uh, uh, closed, and that's it for me. Any questions? I got one question regarding the value that you were saying. Mm -hmm. So it really means that. Uh, the value is only uh, recomputed or calculated whenever it's requested now or after that change? No, the, the value is, com is not computed from, from the beginning. The value is kept uh, uh, alive. And whenever, on, uh, whenever there is a change in the CIDT, uh, the value is changed accordingly. Okay? okay. So it's like a... So it's changed right away. So the question was, like, let's say that I have an app that I only request a value like in five minutes, uh, each five minutes, mm -hmm. and but I receive a lot of uh, state changes. Mm -hmm. that, uh, or ideally, um, the value will only be calculated each five minutes, uh, but uh, you're saying that with each change, it will be calculated. Uh, in yeah, throughout time. time. The value is calculated throughout time. Instead of being calculated at the moment that you request it, the, the value is being calculated throughout time as the changes come in, okay. right? Okay. Uh, so as the changes come in, the value keeps changing. And then when we request the value, it's just delivering new uh, immutable copy. Mm -hmm. Well, not immutable, but the reference to the, reference, yes. the latest. Um, okay. Underneath, I'm, I'm using mutable JS, by the way, so that we don't have to like copy um, copy things, uh, copy the return value every time that you request it. Because if you change it, if it's mutable, you can change it and then you screw up the, the cache value. Uh, and so I'm using immutable JS to Yeah. To um, uh, just, just, just to um, 
you know, continue this discussion, uh, wouldn't it be better to just um, lazy, lazy compute the value only whenever it's necessary, like when it's re it's requested by the by the user? Well, I, well, I think I, yeah, you're you're right. We can we can continue this discussion in 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 the in an issue, but the for the the types of applications that I've been describing, what they react to state changes immediately. Um, Discussify, I think, is is one of them, and and peer uh, peerpad is also one of them. They have a, yeah. a reactive uh, UI, and you yeah. react on state change, and then you get the value every time. So yeah. this this if the the pattern is is that this is this the new way is better. If the mm -hmm. pattern is just okay, I'm just going to uh, compute the value every x uh, t time. Uh, then the, the old the old pattern is is better. Uh, right now, I don't think we have we have like an app that requires um, uh, that that type of, of use case. But uh, I mean, that's that's uh, yeah. Uh, I, I I mean, yeah. The, the current or your new solution is better um, because you know apps must actually um, update the the why, otherwise they will be out of sync. So the mutations might be wrong um, because the data that I sync is not the data that is on the CRDT. So yeah, I think it's a good change. Uh, but for some cases, uh, and hypothetically, let's say that we have uh, an history CRDT, which we don't, but let's say that we have, and I want just to, you know, to join the collaboration in order to get the latest updates, but not necessarily render them. Um, the, in that scenario, I think not computing the value uh, or computing the value in a lazy load manner, it will be better. But that's the, the same, ex uh, well, we can discuss this further, but that, that's a bit later, but in depth, but it's the same, the same uh, effort. Because when you get the, the, the whole state, you get that in one, in one snapshot, and the, the algorithm for generating the value is the same. So it goes through the, all the changes, and the changes are, um, are the, the delta is the new state, right? So mm -hmm. the, you, you come from nothing, and you go into yeah. the new state. And the delta is a new state, so uh, it re computes the it computes the value as it goes through, uh, iterates through the state, um, and then when it reaches the end of the state, you have the the, the final value, which uh, in theory is the same amount of time as the as the old way. So I think we, we okay. kind of have can we have can, we can the of both that worlds, but, but yeah, but we can discuss that in a in a, an issue. Um, all right. Uh, so next up is. Oh, uh, any more questions for me? Sorry. Hmm. Right. Um, okay, so next up is Arkady. Uh, Pedro, can you share your screen? I think it's no longer sharing. Yeah, it's no longer sharing. Uh, yes, because I, w I was, Arkady, do you want, you want to go ahead? Uh, I don't have a huge amount of updates this week. It's mostly been trying to get uh, get small things uh, out of the way for us to use uh, PeerPad for this session, which has not been entirely successful. But we're, you know, it's it's sort of happening. That's 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 most most of what I have to report. Okay, questions for Kadi. Jim, um, I know. I think um, this might be uh, maybe something to talk about with the David, but um, and the team. Well, we have everybody uh, is uh, with, with the rebranding and that. Like, uh, how should we uh, talk about? It, it might be uh, like a product management type overlap with uh, uh, how are we going to brand everything and uh, yeah, well, developers. Okay, I guess maybe maybe this is actually a good a good time to talk about that because you know we've completed uh, kind of the stripping down of the the dev .pad version. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Victor, for that. So uh, it the usability there's still some usability concerns remaining, which we've noted. But um, I don't. Um, I guess. I'd love to hear any feedback as how people 
people feel about this uh, simpler, simpler version? Uh, I, I, I like it. Um, just <laughs> you gotta get the, get it to work. So. Yeah. Yes. The, yeah. The the rationale was to present something that's maybe a little less about explaining what the product is and just kind of uh, focusing on the core usability functions um, and uh, kind of creating the shortest uh, path between us and you know the the things that we actually need to get to work. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, I guess a related, somewhat related question, uh, because we are now kind of facing a bunch of things that are maybe getting more into usability polish uh, kind of questions. Uh, uh, so, so that the need for that might be affected by this possible uh, CryptPad uh, collaboration. So, uh, Pedro, did we end up scheduling separate time for that, or? Oh, uh, the Cryptlab one. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I kind of forgot about that. That uh, that thread. Let's let's. I'll I'll bring it up right after this oh. one. Okay. Uh, so maybe is this something so, scheduled? Uh, so maybe if uh, if people are, do not have to run immediately after this session or like mm -hmm. towards the end of the session, maybe we should have that discussion because I think that really influences the product direction quite okay. a bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, D David, will you, uh, I'm assuming you'll have to run. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe we can just, before you do go, maybe we can just get a quick uh, explanation of, uh, you know, your thinking on that and what we've uh, we've heard from those folks. Do you mean to do it now? Um, sure, maybe, maybe let's, well, actually, I don't know. I think it'll probably end up derailing as a people's <laughs> update. So maybe oh, let's yeah. try try to go around and then at like 15 before you can, um, you can say. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can change the order of also of the, the updates to, to accommodate anyone, anyone leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have that with it? Uh, you tell me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, I do share the same concern as Akadi. Like, I'm sure I'm going to open up a nurse box, but like a good one. Uh, and <laughs> and so like maybe like well, let's like uh, just like go around the updates uh, and so that like everyone gets to like have a chance to communicate what they have achieved and what they have blocked, and then we'll just like jump into the yeah. next thing. We still have like 40 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So let's try try to make your update under five minutes, everyone, and then we should have enough time for David to to talk. So nice. All right. Uh, I think Jim. Okay. Uh, I'll keep mine fairly short. Um, so I was in Japan. So uh, went to Tokyo to Node Fest. I had a pretty good presentation there. Um, I I basically gave a talk. I put my notes on on online. My slides online um, and just contrasted several of the decentralized web projects, uh, IPFS, DAT, uh, WebTorrent, and uh, um, Secure Scuttlebutt. And uh, it was big, big room, probably about 300 people there, uh, maybe 200 people maybe. And uh, it was fairly well received. Um, and then I went traveling a little bit with uh, the family and um, got to spend a little bit of time. I spent some time trying to um, get tests working, but I actually messed up my GS IPFS build and ended up wasting a lot of time on that. Um, and then basically just doing some PRs and things for PeerPad, getting small fixes in, made some React optimi optimizations. And uh, I, I found the time zone there wasn't really very, I spend all my time reacting as opposed to not being in the flow of things. So hopefully now that I'm back here, it will be a little bit better. Um, looking forward, uh, I want to actually continue. Uh, I have some ideas on how to um, change the, or improve the automated testing um, so that we can build more scenarios into it. Um, and, uh, I think this testing here, we're, we've found some pure pad bugs, so that's obviously got to be fixed. So. 
All right, any questions for Jim? I have a suggestion. Um, I was just thinking maybe we should set aside like 15 minutes to uh, do dog fooding rather than trying to do it uh, during the meeting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a good idea, yeah. Um, mainly if the pinner is down, like stay to diverge and then highly and then, and then I think that that may be an issue. So we have to do run some, some experiments that are long running, so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. Um, I, was I was saying something, um, I'm sorry. Uh, so regarding uh, what's happening now on PeerPath, uh, which is, you know, um, blocked in some browsers, in some browsers it's working fine. Is there any way for us to like replicate the session that we have uh, right now so that we can identify the issue? Is there some kind of logging uh, persisted somewhere, even in our browser so that we could upload and analyze the logs? I'm just seeing this fresh right now, and I have a Firefox instance that has the problem happening and a Chrome instance that doesn't have it happening. So hopefully it's written to index DB. So maybe if we capture that data, I don't know. Um, there's a there's a bunch of things we could we could uh, then engineer to to be able to extract. Um, so that there's the CRDT state which is serializable, and then there's like the whole index DB, of course. But that also has contains a lot of IPFS uh, uh, IPFS stuff. Uh, yeah, let's 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 think about about this. How we could uh, debug? It's not. Yeah, let's think about that. So how to keep how to keep the logs um, around and how to do um, how to debug, debug sessions, how to freeze sessions and debug them. Yeah. Um, there is also some libraries that let you just capture the events in the browser. Uh, and sorry, you were you were fitting out. Can you repeat that? Uh, there, uh, you can also capture, there's some libraries where you can capture the input events in the browser and replay them like in a headless one. So that could be a Yep. Yeah, it, it will be nice to have like a, a debug mode uh, enabled. I mean, where we extract a lot of data and persist it somewhere so that we can, you know, grab the data and almost replay what happened so that we can identify issues. Uh, like this, like what happened uh, today, it will be awesome. All right, let's uh, let's open that. Let's put on, on the notes to 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 address that later. Um, all right, next, uh, uh, Andre Cruz. <laughs> it's the same guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, I've completed uh, the Versidag module, uh, which essentially essentially allows us to uh, build a DAG, um, a Merkle DAG where each node has a version, and there might be also nodes that are merge nodes, uh, so that we get partial order. And by having a tiebreaker, we can have uh, the full order of uh, versions, so that we can have uh, like history, a feature where, where we see the whole history of, for instance, the, uh, comments or even peer path documents. Um, and, and also, I've built this in an agnostic way, so it's not, um, tightly coupled with IPFS. Uh, but then I developed a module called IPFS Versidag that is just a simple wrapper uh, so that uh, it integrates with IPFS out of the box. Uh, so those modules are released, are published on NPM. And uh, I think the next steps will be for, um, to be integrated in, in Discussify to see if they work well. Um, also, I've prepared and gave a talk at at OppoJS. Um, the name of the talk was uh, True Serverless. Um, you know, serverless because uh, it's a term that's been hyped right now, right now, or for a couple of years now, but uh, it's not real serverless because there are servers. Um, so True Serverless means, uh, you know, uh, we are servers and clients at the same time in a distributed, decentralized network. Um, so the talk, uh, I, I think, was going well uh, until the demo. So I finished the demo and, <laughs> okay, David is loading. <laughs> uh, so uh, the demo didn't work, uh, didn't work because uh, the internet connectivity was awful. So it means that uh, connecting to the, to the um, WS star didn't work out. And I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, I, of course, I could have um, had a local Hindu server and point to that, 
but I wanted I wanted the thing to be more uh, interactive interactive with the public, so they so they could access the domain that I was to link through, and they would interact with me uh, in the to do list. So using a local rendezvous server wouldn't work out. So yeah, I think the demo uh, didn't all work out as planned. But um, in in terms of the video that was recorded, I will I will make. Um, I actually already did it. Um, uh, to do version here in my home working and we'll make we'll make a, a post production where we'll cut the, the thing that didn't work and put the thing working so hopefully uh, we can reuse that video um, you know and put put it on uh, IPFS YouTube YouTube channels and so on uh, anyway it's a lesson for me and uh, I think in the future um, it might be worth to have like um, a small hotspot Wi-Fi hotspot or something like that that we could set up in 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 um, in events or even in, um, in talks like this, and ask people to join that hotspot, that Wi-Fi, so that we can interact uh, get a, a collaboration going on without any problems. Um, so that's something to that I learned from, of course. And also, I I would like to you know repeat this talk in other conferences. So I'm I'm open for ideas where uh, this kind of talk uh, talks will, will be good to give. Um, in progress. Uh, so I'm helping Pedro Pedro Santos. Um, and by the way, Pedro Santos, uh, I don't I don't know if uh, Pedro Teixeira already introduced uh, Pedro Santos here in the working group, but um, he will uh, helping uh, launching Discussify on Firefox and Chrome's, Chrome Chrome uh, extension stores. So I'm helping. Him with the tasks that are required to, to in order to launch to launch Discussify, basically. Um, blocks, um, most of the stuff that I, that I, that I was blocked uh, was moved to Pedro Santos, so I don't have any blocked items uh, right now. And my next steps will be to fully dedicate my time to kickstart the identity project. Um, and also, uh, there's a discussion going on about IPFS log, uh, because IPFS log, um, has a lot of um, features and similarities to Versida. Uh, so perhaps we can collaborate together in order for, um, you know, to make a, 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 just one solution to solve the same problem, basically. So I've set up a Doodle um, so that we can arrange a common time that we can chat about it. Uh, so if you are interested in, in that discussion, there's the link, that's the, there's the link there in, in PeerPod in case you want, so please fill it if you're interested. Um, and regarding, I have some small notes. Um, so I'll be going to a conference tomorrow. So I'll be mostly uh, intermittent uh, till Friday, but I will be working offline uh, as usual. And by the way, I have a demo uh, on IPFS versus that, that hopefully I will have some time to, to show you guys. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Any uh, questions for Andre? Uh, it's not a question. It's more of a suggestion. Um, on on the the stressful moment of like doing demo. By the way, when I posted the comment, I was not laughing at the demo. Uh, totally feel the pain. Uh, I, like I was making a comment for like explaining serverless to this group because I believe everyone I gets it. <laughs> uh, um, but but yeah, so so that was fun. Uh, on the demo, like the the thing, like th thinking from the perspective of the user, right? Like if we are selling a thing that like is true serverless and works offline, yada yada yada, like it cannot break when the connectivity is shitty. Like it simply cannot. Like uh, because like then then like it breaks the premise, right? Like if we are saying that you don't need a centralized point, if the thing fails because it cannot connect to centralized points, like wait a minute. And, and like I understand. That we understand that like we have this like WebSocket starting, which is kind of like a temporary solution. Like I get it, but like from the audience, they, they just like see well, uh, they are selling me like snake oil, um, or I just don't get what they are saying. Um, and so, but like there are clever ways to make those demos, peer pad, discussify, whatever, like very robust, like, very reliant. Um, you, we we just haven't put the time uh, in, in our heads to think how can we like inject the mechanisms to make them super uh, reliable or yes like there has actually been some work I, i'm being unfair here there has been like some work to, to make this more reliable in certain conditions um 
and, and IP fastener in the browser can always connect to a loading in the, in the desktop. Like you can always like find it, connect it, uh, and I can load it in the desktop as multicast CMS, right? And so actually, as part of the show, it would be amazing to like even like just see the application like fail and see, oh fuck, like I, I cannot like, oh sorry, uh, screen recording. Oh, that, damn it. Um, I cannot like connect to the outside um, world. My application is kind of like not working well. Let me just like spawn a node here on my machine and, and like, sh like I, I can show you how this node will then relay my connections to the other nodes that are in this room. Um, Yes, like bring it, bringing external routers and like external MyFi modules is also a good idea. Like that, that's like bringing backups of backups. But but then again, like like I would like recommend, uh, well, if there is time, for people to actually try to like divide, like design a script of like what are the multiple scenarios where like the application web apps break. Like the connectivity doesn't exist. Connectivity is slow. Um, I am connected to the same router. I'm not connected to the same router. Uh, stuff like that. And, and kind of like just, just like do a story of like what would the demo look like and then try to record a video and explain it. So like the first IPFS demo uh, ever was was like just like two IPFS nodes transferring files and then like disconnecting the cable from the internet. Um, that one never got published. Uh, there's another one. Like this is okay. Like I'm just posting here the video. It, it was like the the first official demo of like npm and IPFS, and it's kind of like you are installing npm modules, and then like you just like I, I unplug the cable, and so like internet is gone. Um, but then I can install it again because well, like IPFS has a discovery, right? And, and so that is like a very magical moment for the users. Like wow, I didn't expect that to work, right? Um, and again, yes, like today is not perfect. It will require you to like spin up a daemon on your desktop. But but like that is still super powerful. And and, and then like you can then caveat saying, hey, like there's also like this Solidity web stuff uh, that like he's bringing multicast DNS. Like we will not even need this. And like, so if you think this is like super powerful, then like go knock at Mozilla's door to get them even more excited. <laughs> and so like use this as, as an opportunity, like to, to, to plan the idea, like put yourself on the audience. And, and, and like do spend your time, like just like writing this script and going through the hurdles because that's exactly what the users are trying to do. Like they're trying to understand how to use these things. And from our perspective, our like protocol designers, we just like sometimes myself included, uh, uh, like just throw a bunch of like jargon saying, oh, you can connect this node to that node, etc." But like, because we never have like a script formulated, uh, it's hard for them to follow like uh, step by step. But, but then again, like uh, this is not like a, a comment particularly on the talk. It's just like in the way that we do demos. Um, I'm just saying like for the future, all the demos of the apps we build uh, actually have an opportunity to shine even brighter if we take the network conditions and we adapt to it and we show it being like uh, resilient. Um, yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Just to be honest, I, I completely panicked there because uh, Sarah was saying like shouting to me, hey, you have five minutes. And I was like, okay, I have, don't have time to spawn here a rendezvous server or something like that. So I just, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, get back to the, to the presentation and continue. But if I, I had more time, I could like uh, spawn uh, the daemon locally and point to there and things will, will, will work, work out. But of course the audience wouldn't be interacting with me, but at least uh, the to-do demo would work out. Of course with the Wi-Fi or the hotspot, the, the public, the audience will be able to uh, see me as a peer, uh, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, 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 again, like, I'm not really, like, I, thought, I think the talk was great. The content was like, uh, the illustrations, like, uh, I, I really look forward to see that recording online with a new demo recorded. Uh, and so this is like just a demos in general. For example, I'm not saying that given that situation that you should have had, uh, open your uh, code editor and like start changing the code to fix the problem on the fly. I'm saying that like this classifier or peer pad should have like a settings button where, oh, like, okay, fine. Like this is not connecting to the outside world. Let me just like add the multi adder here to connect to my local daemon and now it connects and, and, now, uh, and now it works, right? Like, it, like the, the whole application needs to have the mechanisms that are there so that like when when these problems happen you can very quickly just apply the fix like you don't have to change any any bit of the code or like rebuild application again etc um yeah so that's like this is an example yeah i was just like trying to write this script and writing it and following it okay
Any more questions? No more questions. Okay, so next in line. Uh, mm, where is, uh, uh, so I'm going to follow. Mm, so I think it's not sure. Uh, Pedro Miguel. Uh, is he is here? Is not here? No, no, yeah, he, he's not here because uh, he's at the, uh, the hospital. He couldn't make oh. it, okay. but he left the um, you know the the his notes here in case uh, you want you want me to read it or just you know look at it. No, uh, it's, it's it's fine. I know it's uh, it's very thorough. Um, we can read it later uh, offline. So, okay, uh, Adin, uh, wanna go ahead? Yeah. Um, so I have a, uh, version graph synchronization, uh, or replication proposal that's in the IPLD repo. I'm, I'm waiting for feedback from them. I think they're just trying to collect use cases so that when they develop sort of somewhat generic or pluggable replication strategies, um, they can take a lot of the different use cases into account. Um, this also, I'm, I'm going to be following the, you know, uh, the Versadag IPFS log meeting and, and that sort of stuff because there's, there's a lot of similar problems that are being attacked at the same time and just seeing how much synthesis we can get uh, is, is good. Um, I, I did a, it now supports multiple named graphs so that you can treat this, start to treat this thing like uh, IPNS, right, where you say, I want to publish to this graph, this edition, and it will handle all of that, which allows me to then have a pinner that kind of, that kind of works. Um, and I started trying to move to using IPLD structures for communication uh, instead of protobox objects, uh, and maybe looking into, I've been poking the loop P2P team, but starting to look into uh, RPC or other sorts of common communication mechanisms that we're not always rolling our own and also so that uh, the stuff I'm writing in Go will make will be pretty easy to talk to anything going on in JavaScript land without having the thing having the clients diverge um, next up is just is making uh, the replication so I, I had a long talk with Pedro yesterday thank you um, about sort of future directions and some of the right priorities for this. Uh, and I think what's, what's gonna happen is um, there's gonna be some uh, improvements on uh, the algorithms um, so that they can get used. Um, so making sure that the graph replication tolerates partitions or other you know, repeated disconnects and reconnects um, or allowing it to do what, uh, what PeerStar does in terms of not just uh, sharing with people that you don't know about in advance using like a public channel like PubSub to identify your peers. Um, but then the next step is more uh, research and synthesis, trying to you know, take all of the input that we're gonna get from the textile folks and the things going on uh, with Versadag and the things going on in IPLD land and try and align these a little bit more um, so that we, we catch them before they go too far down the road of being separate. Uh, and that is largely where my work will be and hopefully uh, we'll be publishing sufficient specs to document what it is that's happening as I discover it. Awesome, thank you. Um, just a quick comment. It's, uh, um, it's, a, it's a bit about uh, maintaining and keeping a, a common language between all, all the all different efforts. Um, what is membership? What is discovery? Uh, what is the collaboration? What is uh, gossip? Um, and so that we entering the next next year and now the, the, the roadmap for the working group is being, is being published. And reviews uh, that we know uh, that that we know that we're talking about the same same things when we when we when we we say some names. Um, that's it. Any questions for Adin? 
yeah. the uh, no, not a question. I'm gonna suggest it, but I just, I'll make it a short one at time. Uh, which is uh, probably like one of the groups that I've spent more time like thinking about this append only, append only stuff in versioning of graphs is the DAF project. And so things that like Matthias wrote on like Hypercore and all the Hyper stuff, it's actually pretty robust, like really solid, really like well tested. Uh, it's like the core of that. Uh, well, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and, and so like just like consider like going through their repos. Uh, I believe they have a very like, like very succinct spec for, for that piece that is like very easy to, to grasp. Uh, and then again, like if there is like something, like always consider reaching out to Matthias. I'm sure he will be more than ha happy to, to just like, answer any questions. Um, and so, yes, we, we probably cannot like use it directly because it's a very custom to that needs, uh, but it would be great if we could make something more uh, out of it, more generic, that could really go over IPLV and, and over any other peer to peer stream. So yeah, like there's a, like perhaps like even like if there is a meeting to about Versidag and IPFS law, perhaps like James is even consider being Matthias to see if he's available, uh, because he, he he can like bring a lot of uh, experience to that conversation as well. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to th throw in on that um, when I was flying back from Scotland, I actually uh, ported Hypercore so it actually runs on IPLD, and it's on GitHub, but it's it's only seventy five percent done. So um, I was previously working on that stuff. So all the data structures are fresh in my head. I wanted to learn IPLD. And so um, I could give a tour of that to anybody who wants to see half-finished code. So. Yeah, thanks. No, I, that's, and that's definitely, that's looking around for, for sort of the, you know, appropriate ways to do this or what other people have done is, is important here. Um, I sort of in my my internal roadmap of of plans uh, have have pushed off the you know make the algorithm more efficient and figure out what the best way to do this is for a little further down the road um, so that I can get to a uh, sort of a, a demoable or usable state first and make sure I have the interfaces down and then if we want to swap out the implementation for something not quite so naive. Uh, we can do that. Um, I'm just, I don't know if that's the right rabbit hole to go down right now of like, how do we get, uh, gra you know, this append only graph replication down pat. I'm not sure if that's like the thing we want to start on now or if that's a, a later problem. Um, I want to say from the perspective of like people who come to us through the collaborations process and ask for features or like describe their applications that having a basic append only primitive or uh, a generalized dependent link graph sync uh, is super high. Uh, like that's something everybody wants. So just like two cents. Thanks. Yeah, we, uh, then we can we can go through hyperlog and and um and um, how how they implement it. Also, Jim has worked a lot on 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 using on using it with Matthias, so we can we can bring him to the conversation and and and, and yeah, the, I'm happy to bump that up if that's if that's the priority. It's the, mm -hmm. you know no no sweat off my back. Yeah, I think we might be talking about different things as well because uh, like Hypercore is 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 only append only log. So there is a tree structure there, but it's a binary tree, it's sort of internal yeah. thing structure. Uh, whereas I think some of the other things we're talking about are sort of arbitrary tree structures and how to sync those and how to version exactly. arbitrary so, tree yeah. structures, there's, which there's, are there's different than binary tree. Block, the binary tree thing, and then there is the, the collaborative, the, um, the thing where we have multi, multi, multiple of this and then you, you, you sync them together. Um, those are two are two different cases. I, I agree. A panel in log is a single writer. Um, in for if you're using hi, hyper, I'm not sure exactly which construct is the one that is a binary tree. Yeah, this um, hypercore is just a it's a, yeah it's an append only log, but there's an mm -hmm. indexing structure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there was a thing preceding it called hyperlog, which is a, I don't really know too much about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then uh, there's a, there's abstractions on top of it, hyper DB for uh, 
giving you a key value store, multi-writer type of thing. So mm -hmm. okay. uh, there's a whole stack of different things we can use. All right. Uh, or, yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, okay. So who's left still? Uh, then uh, Andre Souza. Yeah, I'll be really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the last 15 days, I've been working on multiple minor tasks, not properly related with the working group itself, but I'll name a few of them. So the review and motion graphics for the CISL video, the OBOGS publishing material, uh, the DAM solutions for the design team uh, regarding PL. Uh, on Discussify, I've prepared the assets to publish the extension on both Firefox and Chrome. I'm following up the animations with Pedro Santos. A new issue was open on GitHub regarding that. Uh, I prepared some illustrations and uh, improved the presentation of Andre Cruz for OpenJS as well. And right now, yeah, I'm blocked on, on PeerPath, which will be the next steps and uh, the future of the project since I saw that on GitHub the, the project was deprioritized. De and then the next will be finalized with the Moxie team here, the, the proposal for the connectivity and consistency on UX for peer pad or discussify regarding the pinning and yeah that's it at least for now Pedro you're muted <laughs> Pedro you, you are muted <laughs> you, you we are not hearing you <laughs> oh sorry sorry uh yeah, so we, we were, we're going, sorry to be speeding, uh, speeding but uh, uh, so we're still, David is, uh, would like to leave some things to discuss at the end, we still have 10 minutes. Um, can we give some quick updates from, from you, Marco and Ander? Like those are the people that are. Yeah, um, so I'll go very quickly. Um, on this um I, I was researching uh, about the publishing, uh, Permutus uh, updated the README, uh, the main uh, and extension repos. Um, da, 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 da. There's there's a, a branch there with the, the updated README, uh, included the, the development install and the instructions for the normal install, uh, which will now need to be updated. Um, uh, defined also which UI aspects need to be po uh, polished, uh, created copy, and helped with the imagery for publishing in the stores. Uh, we finally released on the Chrome Web Store, by the way, the, the, there's the link there. Um, so the, the, um, the plugin is, is finally live, although I'm having problems installing. Uh, it just went live today, so I'm not sure what happened there. I need to, to check again. Um, I've also created a list of influencers who could help us uh, with raising awareness, awareness about Discussify and PeerStar, PeerBase, people who could potentially write about us, talk about us. Uh, in progress right now, uh, there's the collaboration life cycle, and I'm trying to to coin that name, a workshop to create uh, UX guidelines for peer star and peer, peer or peer based apps. Um, okay, so I helped out fixing problems with Andre's talk on OpenJS. Uh, blocked right now for Discussify, the uh, add ons for Firefox. Uh, we need privacy policy, uh, so I, I'm not sure where that stands right now, but we can really polish, uh, publish until that's solved. Next, um, so I want to finalize the collaboration uh, life cycle. Um, I will be putting the list of, of influencers in an issue. Anyone uh, in this group who knows someone who could be writing about this or talking about this, please uh, reach out to me either directly on, on or on that issue uh, so that we can create some mass uh, who could uh, gather interest around what we're doing. Um, I also want to check what type of feedback and insights we'd like to gather from Discussify and how we can actually gather it. So we're talking stuff like um, uh, Google, Google Analytics or other things. Um, and if, if we have time, uh, start discussing uh, on the new iteration for IDM, UX and UI with Andre Cruz and Andre Sosa. And that's it. Um, I, got, I got one thing to say uh, about the, um, the privacy policy. Um, so at the moment, I think, uh, uh, I, I think you are in CC, Marco and Pedro as well. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, Lido have, have written to the legal team asking advice, um, advice uh, on, on this matter, but they didn't respond yet. So um, if possible, David, will, be, will you be able to like, uh, you know, uh, speed up the process of um, 
getting these uh, sort out sort out by the legal team somehow. Uh, was it like yesterday or the day before the email got sent? I think it was three days or four days ago. Not oh, sure. four days ago. Yeah, last Friday, right? Um, it was Thursday. Thursday, I think. So yeah, let me see. Okay, so yeah, I could like give an edge. Uh, again, like these things take time. Uh, it's not like people have like an answer top of their heads. Like they, probably the legal team is just like reviewing a bunch of docs or like checking in with other people that might have experience on this. Um, but but yeah, like uh, we can ask them to give us at least an ATA of, like if they are like in progress or yeah. just like if they have an expectation to have an answer by, by when they will have an answer. Um, yeah, and so, you, yeah, and you are in TC. So Marvin, Marvin, yeah, Marvin did reply. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just <laughs> and see if he deals anything. Cool, uh, moving on. Um, Dirk, wanna give you our update? Yeah, let me make it super short and sweet. Basically, uh, I've just been working on discovery stuff and I'm going to keep going with it. Cool, thank you. Uh, all right, David. Uh, all right, okay, so we have like six minutes, so I'll tr try to compress as much as possible. So, um, so th there's this idea, which, by the way, it's not necessarily mine. Um, I, I've been talking with multiple people and like multiple people will arrive at the same conclusion from different uh, ways of thinking. And, and but like, I think like we all agree in one thing, which is um, we are, as a project, as the APFAS project, our goal is not to replace or compete with other products in the market as in like, we are not building PeerPad to compete with Google Docs or, or even like the other attendees, script pads, other pads, and so on. Um, we we'll love to do everything open source. Like we 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 love to like to get contributors, uh, and and we love to show the way, like to enable more developers to come into the web platform. Um, and so th there's like a, a blurry line right now that like everyone is feeling, I believe, uh, at least from the people I talk with. That like we like it's hard to understand like exactly the audience that we are marketing this this product that we built for. Um, because for once we try to make it like very user friendly so that we get like a real reality feedback, like that, that reality check in with the users and, and like something, um, that we can test against, like test our assumptions, test our designs, test our uh, infrastructure, etc. But at the same time, like, um, if we market just for users, then we might miss the, the original goal, which was creating the blueprints for other developers to adopt these technologies. And also like, because developing a product is a ton of work, right? Like we have to develop a protocol, we have to deploy the infrastructure, we have to like create a network, uh, we have to like develop the product, design the product, market the product, like just outreach, get users, collect users feedback. Like, that's like so much that like, uh, it will be almost like a, like there's literally entire companies just like to create the product that we are trying to build here in the working room. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, uh, one thing to have to consider is, hey, like, can can we actually go back to the original goal and like set it in a way that we don't like lose track? But like the original goal being, can we push the ball forward? Can, can we create the blueprint on how to build these applications on the web? Get feedback from users, get feedback from developers, but not like enter in a mode where we need to create the the, the best product in the world because like we need to be the one like having mo most users. Um, because the other thing that, that happens, especially in this ecosystem that we are part of, is that a lot of these things that we are building are a lot really important for um, other communities. And so, for example, a, a, a new, like Creepad was mentioned. Like Creepad uh, was uh, like a collaboration editing tool that was built so that people could like have um, so part, in part some of the same goal, like collaboration without Google Docs. And, and like collaboration that is private. The thing is like Freepad doesn't work offline, doesn't work distributed. And so they always have been interested on like being distributed, but like he didn't have the primitives out there. Like he didn't have the, the, the framework, the libraries to, to do it. So they kind of like defaulted to do centralized. But now given that we have proven that like this is possible, that we have showed, now it's a good opportunity to reach out to them and say, hey, like, is it now a good time to consider like going full the web with Freepad? And, and if it is, 
perhaps like it makes even more sense for us it's not like investing resources on like continuing developing peer pad and like improving its um its design etc to actually just like help the peer pad team adopt it and, and then like let them get even a better product and, and perhaps not only work with the peer pad team but like work with any like hack and so on like all any of these open source products that might have this interest uh we still might keep peer pad around just like to be the blueprint of like building this thing but like we don't necessarily need to uh like maintaining for life um the thing is like when once we kind of like reach this goal um we we can then allocate the resources that we were building peer pad to build the next Z web product like pave the path pave the path for the next thing because now we know we have a a, a collaborating tool that is private that is distributed something that we would love to use uh, and it happens to be maintained by a project that we trust with that or any of the other ones, and, and we would be happy to use it. Same thing for Discussify, right? So Discussify uh, was designed to be like a, a, a step towards a, a thing that is even more ambitious, a uh, Kipster, like a, a knowledge uh, base um, note-taking collaborative tool. Um, but but the thing is like the, the, the primitives that Discussify builds are actually very useful for other types of applications today, namely like anything that is web annotations. Um, and, and again, like in this space, there's like multiple open products of web annotations. And again, the app are open to care a lot about privacy and like users owning their data. They just like default to centralize because that's the thing that they had available when they were building the thing. Um, and so, yeah, uh, uh, and uh, like, uh, like I really need to jump to the next meeting, but like I, I really want to point this idea that like, hey, like if, if our goal is to create the blueprint, you know, like to get these ideas, these primitives deployed, like for other groups to adopt them, then perhaps like, um, for example, like in the, the front page of your pad, the communication is not like get your pads fully private. It's more of like peer pad uses peer base to enable um, like an app to be built that like, like the, the communication is private by default and like it's distributed by default. So, so it, it kind of like changes the language a little bit that like we put in our front pages of the websites. It's it, it like, basically it's like shifting the focus towards more developers uh, rather than just, just users. Um, and, and, and like, I think it's like kind of like refreshing in somehow because like it really like opens our mind to start thinking, okay, like what are the other use cases of dApps that like we are very close to like make the primitives that are really good for them. And, and so uh, like, you know how we decided the top level priorities for the IPFS project because like all of the Delta, like we have the importance, ecosystem growth and the Delta. And so like, what are the use cases like collaborative docs, chat applications, uh, web annotations, um, I don't know, like distributed markets, whatever. Uh, what are the things that we are so close to get all the primitives right to the scale, the scale that those apps need? that would make sense to develop a product, like a blueprint that we can encourage those communities to, to adopt the web primitives. So I see a lot of people nodding. Um, <laughs> again, like uh, from the conversations I have in other channels, meetings, you have issues, emails and so on. It seems like people kind of like do like the way to that this is being framed, like the, the, the new way that this is being framed. Um, I really need to jump to another meeting. Uh, any, any like burning comments that if you, you want to make sure <laughs> you captured right, right here. Okay, Adam, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, one thing is I think it's important that we make sure the data is portable in the sense that like the same, you know, PurePad and, and the CryptPad mark and the CryptPad code markdown thing are very similar. Right. So in order for this to really be like distributed and do the things we want, the same file should basically load the same way. Um, and, and that I think is another part of this, this, this project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so adopting open standards, such as like verifiable claims, the IDs, web annotations will be a big thing of like this work, actually encouraging all these products because like then hack and could be just like a view on top of the same data. Um, that like uh, adds different ways to interact. Uh, same thing for CryptPad, same thing, or even like CryptPad would be the same data, but like always encrypted at rest and encrypted at the wire. It can be the same data, but just like plain text everywhere. Um, and, and there might be other, other types of applications that like expose the data in a different way. Um, and so I, I think that's like super interesting. Uh, and, and so 
the the other way that I painted this picture, I can, this, like I, I don't know if you will agree with this one. I just like came up with it yesterday with a conversation with Pedro, uh, and and, and so I was just like painting the picture here. So like if you think about like the research pipeline, where like ideas going to like research and then papers and codes and then machines and then humans with superpowers, uh, we as uh, the APFS project and Procol Labs as a whole uh, are very good right now at like doing push. Like we are very good at pushing ideas. We're very good at pushing research. Like we kind of like know like if this is a pipeline like we want things to come out of here and like we are very good at like just just pushing 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 um just like there is more stuff through the pipeline the, the developing the products developing like this classify this developing this like peer pad are more cool because like we put them at the end and then like we get feedback from the users and then like, and then it's kind of like oh like we need this more thing this one more thing this one more thing uh, and so it, it is important to have this like push and pull uh, mechanisms in the research pipeline to make sure that the, the flow, uh, like the like the translation of ideas to superpowers for humans, happens. Um, and and I believe, uh, and I, it seems like everyone believes as well. They're like now getting to actually companies, actually projects are running these things like like every single day. Like that, that's like their core business value. Getting them to actually deploy IPFS into their their stack will be like an even more stronger pool than then I as trying to have one more spot in this market of of these tools. Um, all right, this was like my last thought. Uh, I guess like we'll I can like join I well I guess like now the next dynamic data college is like in January. Um, if you, right. if you would like to continue this conversation this week or uh, next week, even like it, it is going to be a long time. Perhaps we can uh, just schedule a call and talk more about this, or just continue asynchronously. Cool. Is there any anywhere we can we can have, they're currently having this talk? I've seen the 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 CryptPad uh, collaboration thing, but it, it's it's been eight eight days. Uh, is there any anywhere else we can track and participate on this? Uh, so I, yeah, on the collaboration, so like on the reaching out. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like the main threads for discussion. Okay. Um, we we can totally like the next step would be like reaching out to the team. But like, so, yeah, Arkady. Um, so so uh, so a little bit of context. There is a, a collaborations repo that's currently like kind of invite only. Uh, okay. I'm working on getting by to just make it open to all oh, of people. Okay because it's a little bit sensitive, but I think we can do it for the moment. Uh, let's start an issue uh, maybe on, well, actually we should, this shouldn't be public. So I, I'll think of where this can live uh, okay. for the moment. Uh, Perhaps so I create a, a Google Doc, and sorry for interrupting, just like for the second yeah. time. Uh, we should probably yeah. create a Google Doc, invite all these people, and end of the conversation, and probably you can like, invite even the CryptPad yeah. team there, or just like to have that conversation. And again, CryptPad is not the only one, there are others uh -huh. that are interested. Um, um, think about it. Uh, actually, given that this is like now a kind of a maybe a serious collaboration, uh, I think maybe we should just make a collab repo the way we've done for Internet Archive and invite relevant people. I think that's probably the, the most standard space thing. Cool. Okay. All right. I really need to jump now. Uh, okay. Thank you. Sorry for like uh, <laughs> just doing this at the end. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you all for the updates. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Okay. See you on the interrupts. Uh, I'll, I'll jump off now. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. All right. Cool. Uh, so uh, I see that Victor. I don't know. Uh, uh, this was probably here. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah Victor's uh, connection was not handling the. the okay. Uh, and actually, I think Victor was. Uh, it's unfortunate that he missed the speech from David because he was, uh, I think, one of the biggest proponents. Of okay. This. Kind of uh, uh, building PeerPad as a uh, differentiated product, mm -hmm. but we'll catch him up. Okay, okay. The, let's let's ping him, and I'll I'll uh, once I upload the video, I I can refer yeah. him to the to the vids part. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, um, cool. So is that everyone's uh, updates? Yes. Anyone missing? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's. Uh, if everyone has still have as a, a few minutes, I think there's a, a demo in line, yeah, right? It's, okay. It's right. Okay. Okay. I will share my screen. So this is a, this is a demo about um, Versidark. So I'll open my editor. So I will be running this file on Node, 
but it should work out of the box in, in the browser as well, the same code. Uh, anyway, I'm just creating uh, IPFS and I'm creating uh, the Versidac here, passing the IPFS instance. And I'm giving uh, a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is the function that compares two nodes, two concurrent nodes, in order to decide which one is uh, most, the most recent. Um, so in this case, I'm just comparing, comparing the meta, which is this argument here. So heading on, I'm just creating a new version calling, called uh, with, with, the, with the version high. Let's say that this is possibly a uh, peer path, for instance. So I'm writing high, and I'm tagging that version with this meta, one. And next, uh, in, the, in, the same, in the same replica, I add another, add another version, but I've changed the text from high to hello and text the meta as two. And in another replica, uh, let's say that I've taken from this version and I appended world to the, to the text. And I've tagged it with three as the meta. And after the, those replicas merge together, uh, they call the merge function. Uh, with B merging with C, and the final text will be solved by the CRDT, but let's say that will be hello world, right? So uh, after, after calling resolve, which is the function that um, you know, tell, uh, returns the versions ordered by the partial order of the deck, and, and um, the total order is, is given by the tiebreaker, it should, should give us the right result, it should give us Hello world as the most recent, then it should give us high world, then hello, and then high. So I'm gonna just run this on node. As actually, I've already did it, but it should run. So as you can see, the, the result is correct. And if I take this um, CID, which is the DAG node, and go to uh, explore ipld.io and paste that hash, that's the ID, as, as I can see, can you guys see the screen correctly? Yes. Okay, let's see, because I have you, the, your faces on the right. So as, as you can see, this version is a merge between two, two other versions. Um, the first one was the, the hello, which in turn, in turn comes from the high version. Uh, heading, heading back to the, to the merge node and go into the other node. I click it, it. Uh, as you can see, it comes from high world. And if I can click it because, you know, yeah, okay. It comes from the same uh, base version. So everything is, is being uh, written on IPLD, uh, you know, using IPFS. So that's it, I think, for the demo. I hope, hopefully you could understand what's, what's going on here. But yeah. Nice, thank you. Uh, this is going to just so people understand, Andre. This is going to yeah. start well. Uh, start powering the the history uh, of versions of changes to a comment, right? To a comment in in to a comment. Well. Yes. Um, yes. At the moment, uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, like um, I'm, I'm not yet developed the, the history feature because I was relying on this. So we, we had, me and Pedro had a lot of discussions that culminated in, in doing the Versidac thing. But yes, uh, by the way, the way it works is like when, when you create a comment, you, you create a node on, on Versidac and the head of the Versidac will be stored on the CRVT. That's the thing. And when, uh, multiple replicas edit the same thing, um, it will evolve over time in terms of the heads. There, there might be multiple heads uh, in the CRDT, but they will eventually converge to the same uh, merge node because um, whenever a new update comes in, we can call merge in order to uh, just converge to the same head so that the CRDT is kept small as small as possible. Um, that's the whole reasoning of the, you know, the Versidag is to keep the, the heads and the versioning as short as uh, as small as possible by just storing the heads and resolving the, the versions from, from the heads. Yes, it came from the need that, that we, some users expand the history, but not, you don't want to overburden the CRT 
with that with that data yeah. and then this way you can provide a side chain that is authenticated so it's verifiable a side chain that contains the the, the history of the um, of a part of the crdt at least and then you can use it as you wish in in your in your application um, there are some overlaps with IPFS log that's being discussed, ways to um, reuse some of these parts into IPFS log so that we don't create two disjoint uh, projects, by the way. Yeah, and actually uh, diversity DAG will also be used to get the, f the most recent version of the comment because at the, mo at the moment on the CRDT, I okay. store the CID of the last comment, of the most recent comment in terms of the last update. But I don't know. I no longer need that. I can use diversity DAG. So uh, when I'm, you know, rendering the comments and a load uh, is requested for a specific comment, I can just call the resolve um, method of the um, of diversity DAG and pass here a limit one, which will resolve just one version, the last version, so that uh, so that you know I can I can just use that, as you can see here. Of course, I will not be using um, strings like here. Um, this is just a demo. In the case of the, the, the discussify, I will be using CIDs uh, as, as, a, as the version. And the meta will be, you know, timestamps, simply timestamps. And that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you, Andre. Any questions for Andre? Add in. Yeah, I just want to make sure I, I understand. Um, how are you, how do users receive the different, you know, like two people comment on a thread? Uh, or this, you know, add, you add diff two different parent, two different children at the same time. How do, how do those propagate? So you're saying two different replies? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, this isn't related to the diversity DAG. That's already um, resolved by, by the CRDT that uh, is created on Discussify, which, which is essentially an hierarchical CRDT or hierarchical data set. Uh, the versions itself is just for um, addition and removals of each comment uh, on, the, on, the, on the thread, on the discussion. But perhaps uh, Adin's question also maintains, which is, how do you handle concurrency? How do you propagate different heads? For instance, if you have the same yeah. user editing the same comment yeah, on okay. devices, for instance. Yeah, that's what I was saying before, but essentially in the CRDT, can you see my screen, by the way? I will put it on. Essentially in the CRDT, I will be storing the head seeds, right? So when, when a replica syncs with another replica, uh, there will be a simple uh, union of the heads uh, and eventually, when you, uh, after the merge, you update the comment or delete it, it will automatically create a merge node and you add another version. That's how I will keep the, you know, the heads going uh, between the replicas. And also, you might wonder, well, if, and that, that, what if there's like uh, 10 devices concurrently updating the same comments? That there will be 10, he 10 heads, right? That's uh, not desirable. So in terms of the, the, the discussify, I can, you know, merge whenever I want, because the merge is deterministic. Uh, even if the heads that they are there uh, are, um, are not concurrent. For instance, let, let's, let's create this scenario where I have the replica A, right? That starts, let's say R1, that starts with a add A, right? Sorry. And I have to, the replica two that each base uh, on the A head as well, but adds a new version. So it's, it changes to the head B. When the, uh, when the first replica receives the plates from this replica, his heads will be A and B. But because the merge is deterministic in the way that non-concurrent heads are removed, you will understand that A is, is like, um, an evolution, sorry, B is an evolution of, of, of A, so it will just remove it after the merge, right? So this means that the merge is deterministic. Even if the, even if the heads are child of um, other, other heads. Hopefully, uh, I, was, I couldn't uh, explain. 
Uh, okay. I, mean, I, yeah, I, no, I, I was also, I think, asking about uh, how they communicate each other, the, the heads, how do peers or replicate oh. communicate yeah. the, the, the heads to each other. And I think you you, you answered that, which is we embed the, the head yeah, the itself, heads. and the utility itself serves as as the means of transportation of of the heads, and the merge function unions the 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 heads, and then if you want to later, you can then resolve the heads into hopefully a smaller set of heads or just the one merged head. Right? Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. right. Correct, correct. That's, that's precisely it. I can actually show you what we, I will be storing. Uh, so this is the Discussify uh, extension and this is the CRDT here. Discussions Util CRDT. So at the moment um, I just have these fields and you can spot here the Versidag seeds which are the heads. So those will be stored per comment, right? And because I have here the seeds, I don't, I no longer need this CID, which was the CID of the last comment. Uh, and I no longer need this updated head field. So the goal is to remove those fields and just use the Versidag to store the heads, uh, which can be one or multiple uh, if there are uh, you know, concurrent updates. And eventually all, all the, all the Versidag seeds will converge to just one um, uh, over time, over time, basically. Was was that uh, enough for you to understand what we? I think so. I may need to think about it a little more and and get back to you. But yeah, I think so. Okay. I will stop sharing. Cool. So, any more questions or demos? No, I don't think there is. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. Thank you uh, so much for, for coming. Um, and I will be posting the notes uh, on, as, as a pull request, uh, on the, the DDC working group uh, repo and be uploading the video soon. Um, and thank you for coming. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.